Sri Lanka is one of the most sought out tourist destinations in the world. To express the richness, beauty and the intensity of affection, the visitors address the country as the pearl of the Orient. Its landscape orientation, especially the warm sun-kissed beaches, creates a mix of opportunities which lead to a fine holiday destination. Bentota, Beruala, Hikadua, Gaul, Nigambu and Trincomalee are the dominant beaches in Sri Lanka. Today, visitors are welcome to Sri Lanka to experience the nation's slithering tapestry of culture and rich abundance of nature. The diversity of temperatures, vegetation and scenery grab a large sense towards Sri Lanka. Also, Sri Lanka is known for a rich heritage and it has recorded history of more than 2,500 years. This colorful collection acts as an indicator of its richness. The World Tourism Organization describes that Sri Lanka has the advantage of having 49 sites classified as unique attractions, 91 as rare attractions, and 7 World Heritage sites and 6 of the 300 nation monuments in the world. Therefore, the greatest gift that we have is our country and it is our duty to put our minds together to develop our country to be a proud Sri Lankan. Good evening to all of you and welcome to the eighth episode of the strategic way forward amidst COVID-19. After seven fruitful discussions with industry experts of several other industries, today we have not only one but two distinguished individuals and in this episode we are focusing on the tourism and hospitality industry in Sri Lanka. Dr. Ruvan Ranasinghe is presently the chairman of UA Provincial Tourism Formation Bureau. Dr. Ranasinghe holds a BSc in Tourism and Hospital Management from Rajarat University, a postgraduate diploma in management, and BMA from Rajarat University, and PhD in Tourism Management from School of Tourism Management, Sichuan University, Chengdu. In the academic year 1999 to 2000, Dr. Ruvan was awarded the Professor Geoffrey Lord Gold Medal for the best performance of the Department of Hospital Management. And he is currently a member of the Asia Pacific Tourism Association. He is a well known researcher on tourism and hospital with more than 50 publications. Dr. Ruvan has served as the project coordinator for new project and food and beverage operation at 8 Can Spain PLC. And he currently works as a senior lecturer at the Uwavellasa University. Today, our resource person is Mr. Chandima Vikramasinghe, the director of sales marketing at Taj Hotels. They won South Asian Travel Awards 2020 as the leading beach resort. Mr. Chandima, how are you? I'm doing great. Yeah, um, in the sense, you know, um, personally, that's all right. But um, we all are going through this difficult time, particularly the um, education in the university as well as the tourism industry. So it's a, it's a uh, hard time. Good, Mr. All good. Um, things could be better, but uh, bouncing along. So... Just trying to be optimistic as much as possible. Yeah. And and the, the worst thing is basically 
though you're so for, for me right now i'm working from home i've been um working um from home since last uh, march 23rd um so very rarely we tend to like you know go into office um but it's 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 a good uh, good change for for all of us um to try and like you know spend more time at home um whereas like you know our normal routine is like you know i tend to travel quite a lot um overseas so being at home for about a year this is actually a blessing in disguise um to start off with and um at the same time it also tires you because um you you're trying to dodge getting covid uh, so that tends to tire you quite a bit <laughs> trying to stay away from the catching the virus that is one and the other thing is working from home um, it's it's actually not working from home you're basically um working continuously um there's like in there's no time frame um, there's no discipline as what it used to be um so there are there are there are pros and cons that you can actually take um in terms of uh, the, the current scenario dr ruan can you share your thoughts on the tourism and hospitality industry in sri lanka how important is it to the country in an economic and social perspective well um tourism industry in sri lanka um has a long history but uh, as a commercial industry we started the industry from you know early 1960s because with the opening of the uh, bandaranaik international airport for commercial flights so uh, before that even there was you know industry was operating from particularly from ships through ships the tourists came here and you know the industry was there but uh, after you know commercial flights allowed the industry was growing around nigambu and the airport and then shifted to colombo and to down south and industry was expanding particularly to some you know big companies because those days uh, we were like the industry was actually basically on um, this three s concept sun sea and sand uh, with that um, a lot of uh, package tourism uh, or we we call it actually uh, mass tourism was very popular in the country uh, till um, late 80s so um, but meanwhile so 1960s and uh, early 70s was the um, best time um the tourism was flourishing in the country and you know um it was like um, some some um, you know over half a million but uh, unfortunately 1983 the the internal struggles or and the war was started even before in 77 uh, 78 there was the insurrection of the country which also affected the tourism industry but economically the country you know 2019 18 uh, it was in the third place in terms of foreign exchange earning which is uh, a very significant contributor to the sri lankan economy uh, in terms of employment nearly we say it is about 500000 both direct and indirect but my experience is much more than that uh, for example um, you know to talk about now we you know i have to talk about l you know all area is mainly uh, it was just a tea um, agricultural based village uh, in 2009 uh, when i arrived here but now today if we go there are nearly 10000 rooms in all and you know more than um, you know several thousands of people involved in um, because that is their livelihood so this is the situation with if you take you know down south miris uh, haberan and all, all those areas no really uh, you know whatever those uh, tourism and uh, important places so which means the the employment as well as the livelihood uh, we call it uh, the 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 family businesses or life uh, lifestyle or enterprises and these kind of you know things so the economic significance and the social significance of the industry is immense um um now from the from uh, i stopped from 19 um, uh, 83 and 80 from 83 onwards again industry was you know like you know going up and down during the war periods there were peace talks uh, in 2012 then again industry started flourishing but again 2004 um, the tsunami you know flattened the whole industry particularly the um, hotels and you know um, um, attractions uh, in the coastal belt which i started my career Uh, and our, our company you know lost four hotels in the coastal belt uh, in that year so then again uh, the industry started you know picking up and kept on uh, you know kind of um, good performance but uh, once again um, these um, uh, attacks on uh, particularly easter sunday attacks and then now uh, tsunami 
So the industry is going through very hard period as well as good periods. But uh, in general, tourism industry in Sri Lanka is a very resilient and economically very significant one, uh, especially talking about uh, bringing the development into the remote areas like Allo Habarana, industry can play a crucial role, uh, particularly getting the foreign exchange and tourists, the attractions, infrastructure facilities to those uh, remote, rural, unattracted areas. This is one of the top industries and I, I strongly believe that we should um, focus and develop this industry to make that um, economic success in those um, areas. Mr. Chandima, Taj Hotels is one of the well-known hotel chains in Sri Lanka. Can you tell us how well Taj Hotels have performed before the COVID-19 pandemic? So, um, for Sri Lanka, if, if I take uh, Vidishit, um, now, it's a, it's a double whamming for the tourism industry um, across two years. Um, so, 2019, we had the, the terror attacks that happened uh, in month of uh, April. That is basically going into the financial year of that particular uh, 1920 year. Um, and then f we were just lifting our heads up towards uh, Jan, Feb, March when the pandemic uh, started uh, lifting its head um, somewhere around between Jan, Feb, and then by March, it just took the peak. Um, so 2019 was, a, uh, it was pretty much a complete washed year um, in terms of the overall operation and the support in terms of financials. Um, but we managed to keep a float over that uh, year where we didn't, um, where we looked after our employees and like, you know, ensure that like you know, nobody loses their jobs. Um, so we've managed to uh, um, keep a float. Um, and at the same time, we changed our strategies um, to try and initially get the, the domestic market uh, to move and, uh, and pivot towards that quite a bit. And from there onwards, um, we took a leadership um, role in developing the Indian market uh, to come back very strongly. Um, so by the time that we had the attacks in April, May was a bit of a, a struggle month, but we had our plans and strategies to ensure that we develop certain markets immediately with the support of the group um, to, uh, to do a lot of marketing efforts and uh, also rebuild um, trust in people to travel with a massive investment that went in uh, into the resorts uh, in boosting up the tour uh, in the boosting up the security factor of it. So um, then by November, December, we managed to come back to the similar sort of levels um, that we were performing pre uh, 2019. So that was one major blow that the tourism industry and the, the, the group uh, uh, and the, the resorts in Sri Lanka that actually um, got impacted. Before the pandemic, uh, before all of these uh, crises that came in, um, from the time that uh, I think 2009, where um, the war ended, uh, from there onwards, Sri Lanka as a destination really, really benefited uh, from tourism. Um, so being in um, in the tourism industry during the wartime, during the tsunami, and after the war, after 2009, uh, seeing the growth in terms of the overall tourism industry, uh, both in terms of supply and demand, was actually phenomenal. Um, we were we were like you know to see so many international brands uh, coming down to Sri Lanka, like the Marriotts, the Shangri-Las, um, all of these, uh, the Hilton now expanding. Um, and then you have the Anantaras that have come in. So um, there was Hyatt that was um, supposed to come in. So these are these are really, really top end brands uh, coming into the destination, of, which is automatically going to lift the confidence of, uh, of, of the, the overall Sri Lanka brand. In terms of overall performance from the, the Taj uh, hotels in Sri Lanka, I mean, if I take occupancy wise, we were pretty much um, hitting an 80 to 85% uh, occupancy in the leisure sector. And, um, and so was the corporate sector, which was actually hitting close upon about 60-65% uh, occupancy. But uh, in terms of the corporate sector, the only challenge was, uh, which was lobbying quite a lot of times, uh, which finally managed to uh, come out of it, was the, the minimum rate structure. So with the minimum rates, um, we could not really op 
optimize i would say in terms of uh, our revenues uh, across to the 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 properties in colombo because in one end you had the the supply growing um and the other end with a minimum rate cap which actually doesn't allow you to um how do i say if i put it very diplomatically it doesn't uh, the market conditions doesn't allow you to really optimize the the occupancies um for for that particular uh, colombo corporate sector um uh, but having said that there was uh, understanding on that and that actually did um, was positively taken and then that was removed um so that like you know we can fight equally in the market to ensure like you know we optimize in terms of a yield um so uh, if if i if i if i say rightfully on uh, until the the terrandex happened um this is actually one of the most fruitful uh, industries um, at that point of time dr one what are your thoughts on the performance of the tourism and hospitality industry in sri lanka before the covid-19 pandemic as a whole yeah actually um 2018 if you take uh, the figures um um nearly you know 2 million to- tourists in the country because um, you know as i mentioned after you know 2009 the industry was picking up slowly uh, because we concluded the war and you know it was uh, i mean we we actually we were focusing that uh, the available rooms uh, will not be you know enough in the country so the um, the industry infrastructure development uh, particularly the accommodation facilities all those things you know very big um, international chain hotels and players came such as you know shangri la marriott and stuff so industry was um, developing very um, very well and unfortunately this this easter sunday attacks um, i mean um, it was uh, mainly focusing on um, top uh, including shangri la some some top hotels and tourists because um, the terrorists wanted to uh, you know get the international attractions attraction to to the attacks and to the country therefore um, i think it was a significant turn down of that uh, picking industry and then uh, it took uh, as i mentioned the industry of sri lanka tourism industry of sri lanka is not you know kind of a, uh, i mean we can't keep it flat but industry was picking up very nicely after that where well, sometimes uh, the the picking up you know the year to year um, tourist arrival rate uh, rate went up to 6 7 um after you know uh, even after the um, easter sunday attacks so the industry was picking up very well and we were doing you know of course um, like it went down to zero uh, after the uh, terrorist attacks uh, now even in uh, these areas remote areas like el it was the same situation but it was picking up uh, especially um, local tourists but uh, once again this covid-19 pandemic started then you know even um, we we Uh, did not i would say um, there was no that much of an impact of the covid-19 uh, of sri lankan tourism at the beginning but uh, with this uh, chinese uh, tourist lady affected and then um, two tour guides so then uh, people thought okay now the the virus is you know spreading through this tourism so people started uh, even uh, like you know um, suspecting like when they see foreign tourist uh is is kind of a uh, you know then um, they thought okay now there is the potential so that that development came in the society therefore um, somehow you know we were also kind of took strict um, control measures uh, late uh, march in 2020 and then um, um, april the airport was closed permanently and until the 26th of january there was no tourism um, at all you know so that was the situation and and tourism was flat to zero and all these you know tourist hotels and everyone is lost and we saw how the 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 uh, mass media was showing that those people involved in tourism you know uh, for example a person uh, having a luxury vehicle transporting tourists and chauffeur guide or whoever and then they started selling some street food around uh, to make their living so that was the situation and this is the situation with the all, all, almost every small kind of entrepreneurs and businesses in the industry and um, so after those terrorist attacks industry was keeping very nicely and growing up but once again uh, this covid-19 pandemic has put the industry down mr chandima can you tell us how the taj hotels have been coping with the effects 
of the pandemic and what are the short term and long term measures that you have taken to survive the pandemic right um so starting off from what i was actually ending on the last question um so uh, the, the strategy right now is to ensure like we build confidence in terms of the travelers so to do so um safety was actually our primary uh, objective to ensure like you know that is been uh, properly rolled out uh, in in all our uh, resorts um so this is touching base in terms of making sure our staff has been well trained um that in in terms of all aspects of it um be it from the smallest of uh, physical distancing wearing your masks uh, screens uh to save both the staff and the and the uh, the guest um so this is a this is a this is not an exercise of one side it's actually exercise of both sides um then introducing technology um to ensure like you know um, that to minimize uh touch uh, as much as possible so um that is something that we have uh, very very strongly come across with um so the if if i take sri lanka for example now we are all um, safe and secure certified uh, by the tourist board and uh, and the the agency that actually took over and uh, ran the audits uh, kpmg so so these are these are certain things that like you know um, which in our our key thing that we have uh, done also understanding uh, the current trends uh, so the, the the trends that we see right now uh, in terms of consumers is they are pivoting towards uh, more reputed brands um that is mainly because of the confidence levels that they have that we will ensure like in the safety uh, and the standards of that we have to maintain um so considering this uh, this is this is our main uh, focus right now as a as a group um to build and drive um this um in 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 the shorter term um long term right now this um it it is a bit too early for us to like you know really assess and come back to you but there are a lot of opportunities that we see uh, coming up um at the and at the time that like you know the pandemic is um, facing off um so this is what we are right now working towards in terms of the long term goals to uh, to ensure um a, a certain um areas that we actually feel that there is opportunity for us to grow Doctor One, when we consider the tourism and hospitality industry as a whole in Sri Lanka, what are the strategies that we can use to overcome the challenges of the COVID nineteen pandemic? Well, that's um, still, you know. Uh, now, uh, yesterday I was reading another, you know, kind of uh, species of the same virus of SARS. Uh, something is emerging, so we are fighting with a, you know, kind of something that we can't see as well as. Uh, itself is evolving so it's kind of a tough situation but uh, of course uh, as you know um, i mean responsible people uh, i personally believe that we also cannot uh, i mean continue silly uh, keep things closed we need to uh, start somewhere and um, you know run things yeah so i i had to like um, um i mean short term measures like safe and you know we need to be safe personally because uh, now during this covid 19 i think we a um, couple of months back we went to uh, you know for a workshop so to us and uh, we had about 50 60 in our group and the accommodation the, for example the room you know once the room is given to you then again the the room boy won't come until you checked out so uh, if in case if you are staying one week maybe the basic thing you know you need to uh, kind of make sure that uh, you know the things are uh, in 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 order in the room yeah in terms of food if you go to the restaurant you will have to use the 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 polythene gloves before you 
take the spoon for for your service and the, the counters are you know covered with polythene and the sanitizing facilities like you know you need to sanitize time to time and you need to wear the mask and all, all those short term measures like to save to you know stop the spreading of virus if you have and also getting the virus from someone else if they have so that was the short term measures in in other words we need to run and and do the daily activities uh, with the you know kind of basic measures so we need to basically get um, get used to it to the situation so that is basically at the moment and then uh, we started talking about local tourism and some you know hotels especially i saw uh, packages and the discounted rates were offered for local tourists which was a, a good time for local tourists who were, who were traveling around you know for example if uh, you know um, a hotel is 100000 where yeah, they offered for 40000 30000 and i saw some most of my friends were traveling around because at those lower rates in order to keep the hotel open i know some of those hotel just to keep it open and uh, and 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 to make sure the um, electricity bill uh, and the, um, the payroll of the staff yeah many many hotels of course they laid off the staff but some you know just to maintain those they were you know kind of um, opening for local tourists so that that was one 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 measure that they took um, other than that you know this was a time period in terms of tourism if i'm talking about the the province this is a nice period to, I personally believe, to you know, um, make sure that those um, um, issues that we you know had previously, especially Sri Lanka's tourism industry is, um, I would say, informal. Like now, I was talking about some ten thousand rooms, nearly ten thousand rooms in Alla, out of which maybe ten or fifteen. Now, in terms of um, enterprises or business units, if we talk about, it is nearly um, two three thousand. But only you know some some twenty is registered with the SLTDA, uh, which is uh, there are other negative uh, negative impacts of that, uh, both negative and positive. But uh, the point I'm making is now this is a classic opportunity for us to um, make sure you know put those things into proper order, um, ask them to get registered, and you know those are those are some. Um, you know, long-term measures, I mean, the, the highly, now, for example, tour guides, vehicles, so accommodation units, and travel agencies, and all those, you know, our, I would say in Sri Lanka, 80% of those are unregistered, yeah, are, are, um, in informal. So we need to, now, now industries like, now, if you talk about countries like Australia, they, 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 they manage very well because they have a very nice system. City council is responsible for all the businesses. Everyone is registered with them, tax system and everything. But Sri Lanka is not that. Therefore, uh, I think to make those informal things formal, this is a very good opportunity, which we are trying to, you know, do some something um, in this province. Uh, also to 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 promote. Now, this is a classic opportunity for us to, uh, I mean, this this uh, digitalize things in the in the long run because it's, it's it's tourism is different today actually now when i was started starting tourism you know when i was a kid it was like um, like some top tour agents like tui bringing tourists from europe to uh, colombo and give them to a top uh, operator here in sri lanka um, let's say it's, it's um, walkers and then walkers will hire a bus from uh, uh, ebert silva and the ebert silva's bus will take the tourists into the uh, down south, those days it was Triton and now the Heritage Sahungal. And then they will spend three days there and they will go around and get back to the flight and go home. Now that was the traditional tourism. But today it is different. The person will get back himself and take the flight, get down from the airport and come to Colombo, take the train, come to Ella and live with the local communities. So everything is on the, on the mobile phone today. Yeah, so which means it is all digital and digitalized payments and everything. Now, I can remember those days when I want to go to overseas from the company, I need to go to the finance department and collect dollars. Yeah, I mean, you won't believe in another 10 years, people won't believe this. But now you don't do things like that. You have all your e-cash accounts and everything here and you can transfer. But now, I mean, things are being changed. And now is the time for us to, you know, for example, these payment gateways and things are strictly controlled here, and which is not the situation with other countries. And um, 
and and marketing especially yeah um, now traditional instead of tra- I, i was listening to the chairperson of sltd recently she was talking about traditional marketing what what we are doing called marketing is like basically now we have a huge budget of uh, sri lanka tourism uh, promotion bureau and we go to these traditional travel fairs yeah london germany and all and trade trade fairs travel fairs and we go with the kandian dancing team our tea and all and then we portray those things but that kind of a tourism marketing is all gone now so it is it is all again uh, on on your mobile apps yeah for example this ali trips of alibaba group is a billion business is is all it's just online app you know so this this marketing and everything social media digital marketing things are in the long run now we can start and think of uh, one more thing on this um, pandemic situation i would say once again the training and development of of people human resource development to the industry especially now why uh, you know when you travel now i have been to uh, bhutan and tour guides of that country are like you know ambassadors uh, very well educated graduates but if you take uh, the sri lankan situation it is pathetic i'm not talking about everyone but um, i have experienced and i have seen uh, those uh, those 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 fellows i would say cannot uh, i mean explain what sri lanka is uh, to decently to a tourist therefore to to do all these things i think this covid-19 pandemic has given us a classic opportunity uh, to to make these um, improper things proper uh, and and um, to go to you know like uh, this this new kind of uh, operational model in terms of tourism because tourist perception itself is is being changed now for example um, i met uh, um a tourist of course he was not a tourist but uh, he was um, from the indian high commission last week he was here and um, those days now if if it is you know kind of a, he is a young guy you know young chap um he is now we we used to tell hello how are you welcome to whatever hug them but no this time it's just like this i go no namaste whatever and that's it so things are being changed yeah so in that sense anyway sri lanka is you know we have this greeting i go one but uh, the other country did not you know hugging shaking hands and all all those kind of thing so this new operational model is the one that we need to go into uh, while you know i mean uh, letting you know whatever in the face of the the virus we need to continue with those uh, um tourism uh, and hospitality activities mr chandim as one of the top level management personalities in one of the best hotel chains in the country are you satisfied with the support the government has given during the covid-19 pandemic um so i think it's it's a new area for everybody including the government um this is not it's it's not something that like you know um that we could vision very easily to understand exactly this is going to be the right strategy or this is going to be the right way forward for us um so having said that i think um, overall the government has actually done a fantastic job um to 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 support um and to uh, in 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 a certain way to control of what what is going on right now and um, and just like what you said uh, there was um th- there was a lot of factors that came into i would say um, to lobbying certain uh, requirements so um, the, the the tourism promotions bureau the tourist board on uh, the the tourism bodies that we have the the hosp- uh, the hotels um the travel agents and the small and medium all of these uh, bodies made sure that like you know we get the right uh, monitoriums get get the right support coming in um to ensure to to have this um industry more sustainable going forward um so with all of that the government did what it could at that point of time to try and support the the industry like you know um opening up in month of may to the domestic market uh relaxing as much as possible in terms of um, restrictions of travel to support and sustain the the, the tourism industry but it's unfortunate that the second pandemic the second uh, wave started coming and it was actually it, it was it was not something that we didn't expect um because we across the world we had seen this happening and uh, we could always take examples of uh, these countries that um, that this 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 happened so it was pretty much expected that it this would happen and it happened as the way we expected it to be 
Um, but like I said, uh, nobody has a magic ball right now to really say that, you know, this is what's going to happen. Um, but in, in the current environment, I would say that the government was very, very supportive. Even though we are still suffering from the effects of the pandemic, now we are learning to live with it and we have opened up airports, international tourists are back in the country and local tourists are back to traveling the island. Therefore, looking ahead, what are your thoughts on the future of the industry, Dr. Ruan? And how do you forecast the future prospects of Taj Hotels, Mr. Chandima? Now, as I mentioned, um, to, tourists uh, from uh, particularly those, you know, like, you know, um, Balkan countries like Ukraine, we had the experience of Russia, German, uh, then again, uh, from the other side, like, you know, Japan, Korea, China, China was, you know, a growing market in Sri Lanka and India. I mean, um, in those societies, people like, you know, they don't, I would say they are not that much of a threat. But the problem was in really in, in our case in, in Sri Lanka. So once the borders open, it is, it is not like, you know, airport is open. It is not overnight you get the tourists. It takes some time, you know, the process takes some time. Yeah. So you need to go to the to the like you know of course buying tickets you can do it but go to the visa you know get the visa procedure now still we have uh, you know issues like you know this quarantine uh, procedure of the country and pcr uh, so there are uh, still issues uh, you know critical issues uh, for for tourists so uh, i my personal belief is that it will take 3 months for tourism to come to a certain level because we, we just opened 26 the airport. That means following day you won't get tourists. So it takes uh, you know time period, decent time period for this this whole thing to take place. It, still, I mentioned you know uh, now the old traditional tourism is also more than 50 percent in in Sri Lankan case. I mean the package tourism. So they will go to the tour operator there and you know get into the list. For example, if I am the operator operating from Germany to Sri Lanka, you know today I will get one tourist. And I can't take him. I need to have 300 with me. So I have to wait. So that, that process, whole process will take um, minimum three months, I would say. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, once, once the, you know, the, the industry is getting into, you know, kind of a, that smooth situation, then things, you know, will get back to normal slowly uh, with the, you know, experience, learning and all that. On the other hand, for example, now our neighbor, the Maldives, they never closed, you know, they, they were, uh, for example, last month, uh, 100,000 plus tourists in Maldives. Of course, it is, it is um, a bit easy for them to operate because they are, they are, for example, if it is a hotel, one island is the whole hotel. If something happens or something goes wrong, it is that just island only. So they have 1,000 plus islands. So it's, it's easy, not like ours. Even Sri Lanka, we were trying this bubble, uh, bio bubble um, approach to handle it, but we got it little bit of a mess up in you know uh, keeping on to the procedures and guidelines i still believe that uh, we also can do that because sri lanka is also an island and we can get the groups and uh, you know allow in certain areas in hotels so that we a proper mechanism like you know this hotel is for this group for 15 days likewise with those uh, uh, measures i think uh, we can um, start as i mentioned so it will take another three months minimum three months to get the normal uh, flow and of course, as you mentioned, in terms of uh, marketing or, you know, destination attraction, Sri Lanka is being, you know, named by a lot of, you know, Lonely Planet and, you know, those, you know, top uh, uh, online platforms as the top destination, which is undoubted. Yeah, so I, because I, I, I know personally, I, I am here in Uwa and uh, this is an overseas for tourists. And um, the only thing is taking this into... They are, I mean, taking this to the tourists, this message to the tourists and bringing them down here. Yeah. So that is the challenge, the process. But other than that, you know, we are a fabulous uh, destination, which is an overseas for tourists and the facilities, as you mentioned quite right, uh, we are very good in hospitality. Uh, so if we can make, you know, these things properly, after three months, we will be back on board. Like I said, um, we, we are coming to some sort of a, safe zone right now um so with the with the rollout of the vaccinations and whatnot uh, which which will surely like you know benefit now if i take for example uh countries like uh dubai countries like maldives um they have given priority to uh, to your frontline staff 
but at the same time they also give priority to the economic drivers um so for example um, if i take maldives uh, now they are already registering uh, everybody in the hospitality industry to ensure like you know they all get vaccinated fast uh similarly there was a private drive that was done in 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 dubai uh, most of their resorts plus the airlines have started vaccinating their staff and making sure that that uh, is been secured so that actually drives the economy so alongside these we actually we will see some sort of uh, movement that will happen to our industry as well and to our colleagues so that we can start the industry pretty fast uh, that's going to help uh, in terms of the economy um, economic drive for our hotels um right now it is um, it's it's it, for for if i take for alisha properties uh, for bentota um, we will continue to uh, facilitate this being on a level 1 and to ensure like you know we have the the tourist uh, movement coming um our colombo uh, tal samudra will actually right now we have not taken a strategic decision but right now we will basically like you know service the 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 domestic market uh, because um, the reliance in terms of our fmb uh, the reliance in terms of our banking is quite heavy um and then of course our, our property uh, airport garden will actually uh, continue to service the crew um so there is there's a lot of um, potential for us to like you know um, move forward but at this moment of time um because this is an ever changing uh, uh environment it's extremely difficult for us to really tell you a, a clear answer that this is what's going to be the future like so right now uh it's it's a more short term strategy for us in terms of like you know um, maintaining sustaining and uh, moving forward but at the same time we have identified what are the the key travel trends uh, right now and um, our strategy has been adapted to those um, key uh, travel trends uh, that is that is that what we see in a short term uh, right now as of now We are going to conclude the interview session upon the impact of COVID-19 on Sri Lankan tourism industry. Throughout this session, we have exchanged opinions, ideas, and suggestions about how to overcome existing and upcoming challenges and difficulties in order to rebuild the tourism industry of Sri Lanka so that it returns to its former glory. When looking at the situation today, most of the population in the whole world have accepted the covid-19 pandemic situation as the new normal and learned how to live and move forward with it while safeguarding their own health and on behalf of my team i would like to express my heartfelt thanks to our distinguished guests of today's session dr uwan ranasinghe the chairman of uva provincial tourism and promotion bureau and mr chandima vikramasinghe the director of sales and marketing of taj hotel for sparing their valuable time to share their knowledge, experiences and views about the COVID-19 pandemic and restating process of Sri Lankan tourism industry. And with that, we'll wind up the session for today and we'll meet with a new episode the next time. Thank you.